Before we begin the removal and installation of our new cluster, we're going to go ahead and swap out the steering wheel buttons. This switch is Motorcraft part number SW6911. This steering wheel switch has four-way buttons which are required to navigate the LCD menu in your new premium cluster. In order to remove your steering wheel buttons, you're going to need some type of thin metal tool rigid enough to pry them out. Here I am using a precision flat blade screwdriver. Insert your prying tool between the steering wheel and buttons. We are first going to want to pry the buttons inward toward the horn button. You can see here that the buttons shift toward the center of the steering wheel. Once the buttons shift, you will be able to push your pry tool further in. Now pry the buttons outward. Now that your buttons are free of the steering wheel, you can pull on them to gain a short amount of slack in the harness. Turn the switch so that you can see the bottom of the harness connector. Depress the small tab on the bottom of the connector and pull your steering wheel buttons free of the connector. Plug your new switch into the harness connector and ensure it clicks into place. Reinstall the switches, starting with the side closest to the center of the steering wheel, and push the assembly back into place. You'll see here I had a little bit of difficulty with it, but keep pressing on it until it clicks into place. Our first step in our cluster install is to lower your steering wheel as low as it will go. Next we'll remove our cluster surround. There are three main clips to release. There is one in the bottom right of your tachometer, the bottom left of your speedometer, and the top left of your driver's side AC vent. Once you have the speedometer and tachometer clips released, pry around the left side of this surround, working upward until the clip above the vent releases. You can now remove the cluster surround. To remove the cluster, we must first remove the two 7mm bolts. The first is in the top right corner, and the second is in the top left corner. Now that our bolts are removed, we must free the cluster from the two retaining clips holding it in. There is a retaining clip in the bottom right and the other is in the bottom left. Once the cluster is free of both clips, lay the cluster down flat so that we can remove the connector in the top right corner of the rear. In order to remove the connector, depress the tab toward the middle on the bottom of the connector. Once the clip is depressed, pull the connector out. At this point, your cluster is ready to remove. Put your old cluster aside and we'll begin reinstalling the new cluster in, re in the reverse order. Insert the electrical connector into your new premium cluster. Rotate the cluster back up and press it in on the right retaining clip and then the bottom left retaining clip. Then reinstall your two 7mm bolts into the top right and then the top left. Now it's time to reinstall the cluster surround. Begin by pressing the top left AC vent retaining clip in and work your way toward the right side of the surround. You have now completed the physical swap of your new premium cluster. Before beginning the pad's programming portion of this video, I'd suggest connecting your battery up to a 12 volt source. This is because Forescan is going to need to gain security access to your cluster twice, and each time it's going to take about 12 minutes to do so. If you don't connect your car up to some type of 12 volt source, you run the risk of killing your battery in the middle of this service procedure. Here I've got my Mustang jumped to another car. At this point I'm going to assume you have an Elm 327 cable that you know works with Forescan. Let's go ahead and connect the USB end of the cable to our laptop and the other end to our OBD2 port. Once your cable is connected, click the Connect to Vehicle button, which looks like two plugs being connected. Yeah. 
Now that Forescan has successfully connected, click the wrench on the left hand side to navigate to service procedures. To program our new cluster, we want to select the IPC PAPS programming service procedure, and once you have it highlighted, click the play button in the bottom left. The first procedure we want to do is the module initialization. This is what creates the handshake between your new cluster and the engine computer. This will take about 12 minutes to complete. Once Forescan has gained security access, you'll see this prompt. You'll need to cycle your key off and back on within 5 seconds. Once you're done, click OK, and now your new cluster can see your engine computer. The next service procedure will run is the Array Some Program Keys. If you're like me, then you bought your cluster used, and the cluster is where the keys are stored. We want to erase any old keys off of our cluster and program our keys to it. You'll need to make sure that you have two keys to run this procedure, as it won't work with just one key. Just like our module initialization procedure, Forescan is going to take about 12 minutes to gain security access to PATS. Before clicking OK on this prompt, make sure you follow its instructions. Turn key 1 off, and then turn it back on and count 6 seconds. Turn key 1 off, remove it, insert key 2, and turn it on for 6 seconds. Once completed, click OK on the prompt and disconnect Forescan from your car. Success!